Hello everybody, how are you doing today? My name is Nikita Valletta, also known as The Body Scientist. And in case you were unfamiliar with me, um, I, have, I am a exercise and sports scientist, holistic sports nutritionist, and um, I have a holistic approach to everything I do. I have studied all the ways to take our body to its highest level. A lot of people get nutrition advice from the wrong people, okay? A lot of people get nutrition advice from doctors. Doctors are not trained in nutrition science. Nutrition is a lot of biochemistry. Uh, people get nutrition advice from trainers. Trainers are not nutritionists, okay? I know, I am a trainer as well with a degree in exercise and sports science and um, nutrition science, okay? Two different fields and areas of study. So a lot of people are giving really bad advice. So today I want to talk about fruits and vegetables, right? Do we really need as much fruits and vegetables as we're being told? I hear, you know, in this country, I'm in, I'm in the U.S., people look at salad as being healthy. If you look at a lot of uh, trainers' Instagram pages, they're, you know, salad and green juice and eating, you know, fish with no fat and lean meat with more salad and raw veggies. And I'm here to tell you that not only do not only are vegetables overrated, but they can be very toxic if consumed improperly. Okay, and improperly means raw. Okay, cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables should never be eaten raw. That's like the cabbage and the kale and the spinach and the broccoli. Okay, um, cruciferous vegetables have something called gordodrins. I don't know if I'm if I'm saying it right because I always read the word. But um, they are compounds and chemicals in the cruciferous vegetables that affect your thyroid, okay? They affect your body's ability to absorb and utilize iodine in many ways, okay? They, they prevent the thyroid from doing that. And what that causes is, is hypothyroidism, which is an underactive thyroid, okay? And nowadays, you know, and, and for those of you who are not familiar with me and my work, I'm very much into traditional foods, okay, because I have a background in Western science. But what I have found in my years of study is that Western science doesn't confirm anything that indigenous people didn't already know. And actually, indigenous science is ahead of Western science. There's still things that scientists don't understand why people did certain things. They're just now learning about the health benefits of something, but it's been known because people have been consuming it for generations and thousands of years. Okay, so even how people process grains traditionally, how they knew to soak the grains, to deactivate the anti-nutrients in the grains, phytic acid and stuff like that. And they didn't have any research laboratories to tell them that, but they did those things, right? So to me, checking out traditional wisdom and what people have done for generations what has is healthy populations who live a long time, what they've done for generations. I always check the record there, okay? And when you look around the world, you know, I loved Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown. I don't know if you ever watched that show where he traveled around the world and around the U.S. And he dealt with culture and food and nowhere he went, not, not, not near a place in the world did somebody give him a salad, okay? When you look at the Caribbean, when you look at Africa, when you look at Europe, people cook their vegetables, okay? And they tend to eat more starches a lot of times than vegetables. When I've been in the Korean, when I've been in the Caribbean and South America, and when I was in Europe, I felt like they ate more starches than vegetables, right? But the fact of the matter is, you know, raw uh, kale is like eating raw collard greens. Nobody eats raw collard greens. Okay, to the black Americans out there who cook collard greens, would you eat raw collard greens? Would you eat raw collard green salad? Would you eat raw collard green chips? And would you take collard greens and saute them on a skillet for five minutes and think that that was enough? We all know that uh, greens have to be cooked for a while, okay, in a liquid with a fat. And what that does is that deactivates the anti nutrients, okay. They mess up your thyroid, and they also, the fat helps us to absorb more of the fat-soluble nutrients from the plant. Plants are actually very hard for us to digest because they are high in cellulose. We do not, okay, I repeat, we do not have the cellulase enzyme. 
So we cannot digest. That's why if we eat grass, go try to eat grass. You will throw up. So if we can't eat grass, that means that we shouldn't be drinking grass juice. And please tell me where in the world do you see people drinking grass juice as a traditional food? Okay? If you try to give salad to an African, <laughs> to Nigerian or something who grew up there, they'll call that goat food. Okay? That's not what people are eating. That's the, the decoration on the plate. And so vegetables should be cooked with a fat or fermented. And in, all around the world, you see cultures of people fermenting vegetables. Like in America, we had sauerkraut. True sauerkraut was fermented. You have kimchi. You have cortado in Mexico. Pickles in Haiti. Every culture has some type of fermented vegetable food or fermented dairy food, like yogurts and stuff in India, right? So... Um, for you lacto ferment the vegetables, they become it breaks down the cellulose, the cellulose, and it makes the nutrients more bioavailable. The nutrients that are in plants are tightly bound, so what helps them to become more bioavailable, which means that we can absorb them and use them, what helps to improve that is cooking it with a fat or lacto fermenting it. Okay, not making it into juices. Okay. And so I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're drinking the kale juice and the green juice and spinach juice will destroy your thyroid. If you want to mess up thyroid, hypothyroidism, okay, then do that. But if you want to be healthy and get the most out of your food, cook your vegetables with a fat or lacto ferment them, okay? People can talk about the vitamin C that's in plants, that's in the fruits and vegetables. Yeah, there's vitamin C, but there's way more vitamin C in liver, okay? Like, way more. And also, like, like maybe 10 times more or so. And um, there's also a lot of vitamin C in raw milk, okay? Um, so you don't need to eat produce to get vitamin C. Then when people talk about calcium, calcium needs fat to be absorbed properly. This is why calcium that comes from dairy... And the calcium that comes from fish bones is way more bioavailable than calcium that's in plants, okay? But again, if you cook that plant and consume it with a fat, it'll help you absorb whatever little bit it can absorb with the calcium that's in it, okay? Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a while because I feel like people just think in their head, every time people talk about eating healthy, they always go to eat fruits and vegetables. Oh, I eat fruits and vegetables. Or I'm eat healthy. It's a picture of a salad or an apple. It's all about the fruits and vegetables, the fruits and vegetables. But really the true nutrient-dense health foods are the organ meats, the raw dairy, the eggs, okay, and broth even, okay? But when you ferment vegetables, you actually increase the vitamin C. So... Actually, true sauerkraut, not only is it high in, in uh, micronutrients and good bacteria, but true sauerkraut is actually high in vitamin C as well. So actually, you can get, if you really want to get vitamin C from, your, from the produce, you really want to do it from fermenting it because it increases the vitamin C several times over. So you'll get way more vitamin C from fermented cabbage than you will from just fresh cabbage. And you definitely do not want to drink cabbage juice, okay? Again... There are a lot of anti-nutrients in cruciferous vegetables. And when you look around, it's funny because I grew up eating kale, right? And I thought that all black people ate kale because my mom made kale my entire life. Just like she made collard greens, she made mustard greens, she made turnip greens. Those are all different kinds of greens. Like most black Americans are known for cooking collard greens. My mother would mix the greens, right? And she cooked kale the same way she cooked collards. She cooked them in a liquid for a while with a fat. You said, what kind of fat do I cook the vegetables with? So when my mom makes kale, she, I think she uses some bacon fat. Uh, you know, collard greens, I know she puts some olive oil in her collard greens. Most black Americans put like turkey neck or ham or something in the collard greens. But when I cook my spinach, I cook it in butter. You can never have too much butter. And butter is actually very good for your thyroid, okay? Because butter is high in iodine. And that's critical for your thyroid. Okay, so I cook my spinach in butter. Maybe sometimes I'll, when I cook with olive oil, I add olive oil and butter because butter is more stable. It's more of a saturated fat. So cooking the olive oil and the butter. 
um, if you are going to make yams, butter, you know, um, if you look at old American cookbooks from the, the early 1900s, all of the, the vegetable recipes were full of cream and butter, like creamed spinach, you know, um, everything was creamy, buttery vegetables, because that is actually how you absorb the nutrients, not from eating raw carrots. Anybody with gastrointestinal problems will have issues consuming straight up raw vegetables. They're actually very hard on your digestive tract. Again, if you're going to eat raw vegetables, they should be fermented, lacto-fermented, with good bacteria. Help to get the good bacteria in, and that good bacteria has digested down some of the plant wall. It makes it more bioavailable and easier for you to, to digest. But consuming spinach juice, green juice, all that, no. So anyhow, the thing about the kale. So I thought all black people ate kale. Then all of a sudden, you know, kale becomes this, this thing, and I'm seeing people eat raw kale, kale salad, sauteing the kale for two minutes. And I started to ask everybody, like, did you grow up eating kale? And every single person I know said no. No black person I know grew up eating kale. No white person I know grew up eating kale. My mom said the same thing. So it's interesting to me because I'm like, I wonder how her family started cooking it. Now, mind you, my mom, you know, she's black from Western Pennsylvania. But, you know, black people in America, we are mixed blood people. And she has a lot of Polish blood in her family. And um, or her mom, you know. And so I looked at that because I remember seeing before that kale came from Europe or something. It's some type of European vegetable. I don't know. Some that maybe came from the Polish because... Um, her dad is from Pensacola, Florida. I've never met any black people that, if any black people on here or white people on here from, you know, make kale, have grew up making kale, not just the new age eating kale, but grew up eating it. Please let me know. Because I know my mom definitely cooked kale the same way she cooked collard greens, okay? And it's really, really good. I actually have a video last time I was in New York of her cooking it that I meant to post that I haven't yet. Um... But it, again, it's a lot better for your, your thyroid. You do not want to drink green juice, okay? You do not want to drink green juice. Um, and so, and there's a lot of people with thyroid problems, right? And so just understand, whenever you have any type of um, kale and tilapia or new, yeah, I don't know if tilapia being, being a traditional food ever. Um, you know, like I said, my mom is in her 70s and she's the youngest of, She's the youngest of seven children, so um, her oldest sibling is like close to 90. They're all still living, okay, and they, they grew up making kale, so it was not new for them. Also, you know, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, bok choy, arugula, you know, all of those, all of those have um, goitrin, which is a compound that interferes with thyroid function, okay? And it interferes with it in three different ways. Thrace, okay, three different ways. It interferes with the way that the thyroid picks up iodine, okay? It interferes with the way the thyroid produces hormones once the iodine is picked up. And the way that the thyroid secretes hormones into the bloodstream, okay? So, and I mean, let's just look around the world. When I travel... You know, when I travel, um, yeah, you finally got the raw milk and you love it? Yeah, raw, raw milk is great. I love raw milk. I can't wait to go back home and get my milk. Um, when I travel, food is one of the things that I study. You know, the, the work of Anthony Bourdain was very interesting to me because when I travel, I'm always trying to get as much information on the foods that they consume and what they're consuming now because a lot of people have moved away from their traditional foods. People always talk about America and Americans eating garbage, but it's, it's a worldwide thing now. You see it all around the world, the people cooking with corn oil and cooking with soybean oil, cooking with MSG. I remember years ago, over a decade ago, being in the, in the, in the jungle in Costa Rica, and you, know, you see monkeys swinging from the trees, but guess what? They were cooking with MSG by the pound, okay? Cooking with margarine, you know? So I'm seeing this everywhere. Um, and this is one of the reasons, that's one of the main things that motivated me to go to Europe. Because I wasn't thinking about Europe before, you know. I was all about South America and the Caribbean. And then I was like, because when I was in graduate school, the, the graduate program that I was in, um, it was the only nutrition program in the U.S. that doesn't take money from the food industry, okay. Every nutrition program in America is funded by the food companies. Just like every uh, medical program is funded by the drug companies, okay. So their doctors are getting their curriculum from pharma pharmaceutical companies. And nutritionists are getting their curriculum from... Uh, food companies, and they're really the same people. 
So I had more of an unbiased education. It opened my eyes to a lot of things. And having the scientific background, I could go look up studies and think critically about things. And um, do some, do, I had a point about that. I forgot why I brought that up. Um, oh, yeah. So... And then, so yeah, so when I was in graduate school, I learned that you know, Europe seemed to be the only place on earth that still has some type of standards and some type of, of awareness of what was going on with the food being poisoned and was like standing up, not, not against, not just against GMOs, but other quality issues. But that wasn't the same thing in other parts of the world. And so I said, let me go to Europe so I can like look at their food. Now I'm not done. I've been to London, I've been to Paris, I've been to Madrid, and I've been to Amsterdam. Um, and, and not just Amsterdam, I was other places in the Netherlands. Cause also when you go to one city in the country, that doesn't represent the whole country. Like if somebody comes to America and they own, and they go to one city in America, there's no one city in America that sums up America. Like it's very different. Like Houston, New York, Boston, Detroit, Miami, Atlanta, New Orleans are totally different cities, you know? Um, so I'm saying that to say that, you know, those, I, th those are the few places that I've been. I don't know if the food might be, you know, when I was in London, it was very processed. I don't know how it is in other parts of the UK. Um, you know, when I was in Amsterdam, I learned that you could get raw milk in other parts of the Netherlands. And I was staying like 45 minutes away from Amsterdam. So maybe if you're like more in the rural area, you could find raw milk easier than in the city. Right. But I'm always looking at access. When I travel around America and when I travel around the world, okay? Um, because me, my, <clears throat> hold on. <clears throat> I'm looking at access because I myself, <clears throat> sorry, no, no, it's in my throat. I myself have strict, um, not strict, but high standards for what I consume. Like I don't consume McDonald's, okay? I haven't consumed McDonald's since I was in high school. I haven't consumed fast food since I was in college. Like last time I ate Burger King or any type of Popeyes, I was in college. Okay, since I have been grown, I have not eaten any shit like that. I don't eat Denny's. I don't eat from the Waffle House. Like I just don't do that, right? I'm thinking about longevity. And when you start eating better food, you can taste the difference. And that shit is just nasty. Not only does it make me feel sick, it just tastes horrible, right? Um, so because when I'm moving around, uh oh, I'm in New Orleans right now and I hear a band outside. I wanted to finish up this video, but hold up. I hear a band. That's the thing about New Orleans, it's random bands. Maybe you'll get to see it. Oh, I gotta go outside. Let me get outside. Where is there's a band coming from somewhere? I'm gonna switch up the topic real quick if I see them. Did they walk by? I don't know if you can hear them. I can hear them, but I don't see them. But so I'll keep talking. Um, anyhow, so yeah, Southern food is synonymous with down south and not the north or what east or west. Exactly. In America, there's all kinds of food from different regions. American food is not just Southern food, right? And I always say that, like you have American food that's from Maine. You have American food, and even in the South, there's a lot of variations. Um, but I just don't like the fact that, you know, these companies try to make us think that we need to consume some processed product that they created. Like, we can't drink regular milk, but we could drink their lactate milk. We can't drink regular milk, but we could drink their rice milk and all these nut milks and all these things that they create. They create products to sell us, okay? Because they can't make money if you go to the farmer and just get some real food from the farm. So they make all these products. They poison the food supply, so now you can't eat the milk. You got a problem with this. Everything's causing you an allergy. So you know what you do? You eat the substitute Franken food products that they make. That's what the food industry does. And by the way, I just did a video. This is why if you're on YouTube, definitely make sure to follow me on Instagram and vice versa. Because I just did a video a couple days ago about why it's, under, it's it, why it's important to understand the chemistry of fats, okay? Why it's important to understand the chemistry of fats. I'm talking about the biochemistry, basic biochemistry of fats. And you know what? YouTube took it down for being misinformation. I was so shocked. 
YouTube took down the video for being misinformation. So that just puts more pressure on me to get my Patreon page done so I can really talk about stuff. Because my YouTube page might get deleted because I'm trying to tell you guys about the chemistry of fats. And, give, and trying to let you know what fats you need and how to understand that and how not to be tricked by the food industry. And it got, it got deleted, okay? So the censorship when it comes to nutrition is real. This is the reason why a lot of things you hear me say, you don't hear it commonly. You know why? Because nutritionists and dietitians, their educations are funded by the food companies. And the food companies put this propaganda into their ears. And it's totally wrong. It goes against biochemistry, because what I'm saying can be shown biochemically, but it also goes against traditional wisdom, what people have been doing for generations. So I like to see what have, and I like to look at healthy groups of people. Show me some strong, healthy people who have good eyesight, who have good bone structure, who are tall and strong and athletic, who are living long lives. Their grandfather's in their 90s, he's still around. They actually can do stuff. And what are, they, what are they consuming? So I'm looking at my Nigerian friends, my Cameroonian friends. You know, people don't like Russians right now, but, I mean, a lot of Russians. You know, they're very, very strong people. You know, Koreans, whatever. Like, what are the longest living, healthiest people eating right now? The strongest people. Okay? And what have they been eating for generations? And so this is what I've been researching my whole adult life. So everything that I'm telling you is well vetted. Definitely follow me. If you're on Instagram, follow me on YouTube. The Body Scientist 81. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to follow me on Instagram at the underscore body underscore scientist. Also, you can find me in Clubhouse at Makeda Valletta. Um, I'm going to start doing more Clubhouse talks, but I'm moving around so much. Um, right now, I'm in New Orleans, and I wanted to do a video about health access in New Orleans. But um, I still hear this band, so I'm about to go outside and try to find them. If you've never been to New Orleans, let me tell you, it is one of the most magical, beautiful cities on earth. I absolutely love it here. Um, but... You know, everywhere I go, I'm thinking about health. And it's not just the food. I'm thinking about, is this a walkable place? Are people always in the car? You know, get, what kind of things can you get access to? You know, those are all the things that I think about. But anyhow, if you learned something from this video, please like it. Please share it. Uh, please let me know. Like, have you, do you have any hypothyroidism problems? Ha Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease. Any issues with your thyroids? Do you eat a lot of... Uh, cruciferous vegetables, raw ones, if you do, stop, okay? Cook them with a the fat or eat fermented vegetables, okay? All right, people? You got that? I'll try to put some resources below on my YouTube page. And until I see you again, have a great day. Bye.